In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about hypothesis statements. The phrase hypothesis statement first appeared on planet Earth in the 1930s, courtesy of a couple very brilliant statisticians like Carl Pearson and Ronald Fisher. First, you have to realize that back in the day, language was a little different, and these guys were very formal in the way they spoke. You can easily see these guys sitting around Oxford, smoking pipes, talking about statistics, and using words like hypothesis when they really mean a theory or an assumption. I have to believe if this were all being invented again today, the language would be a little less formal. But they coined the phrase hypothesis statement, and statisticians around the world have been using that for over 80 years now. Let's take a look at hypotheses. There are two hypotheses. There are alternative hypothesis and null hypothesis. We'll start with the alternative hypothesis, HA. H for hypothesis, A for alternative. This is the theory or the assumption that you're trying to prove, but we state it mathematically. Back in the 1930s, you would state it mathematically so that you could go to the chalkboard and start calculating this by hand. Today, we're trying to state your comparison mathematically so that we can communicate with Sigma Excel and tell it exactly what we want it to do. Typically, you'll write HA down first then you'll write down HO. You might ask, why am I even writing this down? All of the tools in your toolbox go by very quickly. Literally, this will take you 5 seconds, 10 seconds tops to run each of these tools. So you might imagine that in the course of 4 or 5 minutes, you literally could slam through a lot of different analysis. And this is confusing enough to start with, but if you lose track of what it is you're trying to test, that could be extremely confusing. So a disciplined green belt will always write down their hypothesis statement first, then run the test and find out what their conclusion is. Lastly, the alternative hypothesis will only accept these math symbols, not equal, less than, or greater than. Notice what's missing. It will not accept an equal sign. We'll be back to that in a couple minutes. Now let's look at the null hypothesis. H for hypothesis, O or zero for null. HO is the flip side of the alternative hypothesis, and together they cover every possible outcome of your test. If HA is set up as not equal, HO will use an equal sign. If HA is set up as less than, HO will be set up as greater than or equal to. If your alternative is set up as greater than, the null will be set up as less than or equal to. So again, together they cover every possible outcome of your comparison. By tradition, we always state our statistical conclusion in terms of the null hypothesis. If it is clearly wrong, we say we reject the null. If we can't prove it wrong, we say we fail to reject the null. That's kind of an odd phrase, so let's talk about that for a moment. Load into your head your favorite celebrity trial. It's quite possible that only the person on trial knows for certain whether they are guilty or innocent. But think about what a jury does. They're going to render a verdict. They do not say guilty or innocent. What do they say? They say guilty or not guilty. Not guilty is different than innocent. If they have overwhelming evidence that the person on trial is guilty, they'll call them guilty. If that evidence is not overwhelming, they don't say that this person's innocent, they call them not guilty. What does that mean to us? For your null hypothesis, if you have clear evidence that it's wrong, we will say we reject the null. If we don't have clear evidence that it's wrong, we say we fail to reject the null. That's code words, meaning that the null may be correct. If you were to use something like accept the null, because quite honestly, accept is the opposite of reject, why don't we just say accept the null? Well, that would be saying that the null is correct. There is a difference between saying something is correct and saying something may be correct. So the proper way to state this is if the null is wrong, we reject the null. If we can't reject the null, we begrudgingly fail to reject the null. So let's look at a fun example to try to illustrate this. 
Are you familiar with Bigfoot? Large hairy creature supposedly lives in the woods. You have just been commissioned by the Science Channel to launch an expedition into the Pacific Northwest and conclusively prove that Bigfoot exists. So let's look at our hypotheses. The alternate, or the theory or claim that you're trying to prove, is that Bigfoot exists. The flip side of that would be that Bigfoot does not exist. We need to turn this into a math statement. How would we do that? Well, if Bigfoot exists, the number of Bigfoot on planet Earth would not equal zero. If Bigfoot does not exist, the flip side, the number of Bigfoot on planet Earth would equal zero. So check this out. If I bring a Bigfoot into your office right now, you can pet him, you can play with him, you can study him all you want. Clearly, we can reject the null. Bigfoot exists. We've got one right here, right now complete evidence that Bigfoot exists. But what if we don't have a Bigfoot? What if all we have are some plaster cast footprints, some spurious hair samples, and some grainy black and white home movies from the 1960s? Can we legitimately accept the null that Bigfoot does not exist? Here's how this would go in a court of law. You are claiming that Bigfoot does not exist. Is that correct? Yes, I am. Can you conclusively state right now that there is not a Bigfoot in conference room 209? Really? Yes. I'll be right back. Okay, I checked out conference room 209. There's no Bigfoot in there. Thank you. Which now brings us to the topic of conference room 210. You can see how this logic goes on. The only way to legitimately accept the null would be to simultaneously search every spot on planet Earth and not find a Bigfoot, then you could accept the null. But barring that, we say we fail to reject the null. That is just a quick example that you can't prove a negative. Can't prove a negative, that is why we use the phrase fail to reject. There's one last thing to take a look at with these hypotheses. We've taught you rule one, the alternate is the theory or the assumption you're trying to prove, and rule two, it only accepts the math symbols greater than, less than, or not equal. So there's a dilemma for green belts. What if someone tells you to please test Ford versus Chevy to see if they're the same? In other words, test to see that Ford equals Chevy. Well, we've just told you rule one, the theory that you're trying to prove is your alternate, Ford equals Chevy. But rule two tells us that we cannot use an equal sign in an alternate hypothesis. No problem. We will come up with an answer for this situation. We're just going to set the alternate up as Ford is not equal to Chevy and the null is that Ford equals Chevy. In fact, the software is set up for many of your statistical tests to kind of error proof this. You will see a little box in Sigma Excel and it will say how did you set up your alternate hypothesis and you'll notice that it only accepts those three symbols. This is just one extra layer of confusion on top of all this. But rule two dominates rule number one. You cannot use an equal sign in an alternate hypothesis. Believe me, I understand that this is confusing right now, especially if you have never seen something like this before. The trust me statement is this. This is much like learning to drive a manual transmission. At first it's cumbersome, you're thinking about everything that you're doing, but after a while, you're upshifting, you're downshifting, and you're not even thinking about it. So once you have run around the full Six Sigma game board here a few times, I believe you'll find that it makes a lot of sense, and you'll start doing this faster and faster, and you'll stop thinking about this because the rules become second nature, and you'll be able to do this very easily. So let's go back to the material and learn a little bit more about this game board. 